this is Pete Madsen for Acoustic Guitar, and I'm here to present Adam Levy's lesson on how Neil Young pulls singular sounds from common chords. Some guitarists search obsessively for chord voicings to spice up their arrangements. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's easy to overlook that common chords such as G, A minor, and D provide a lot of opportunities for you to change the voicing of very simple chords. Among the many players who've used such tactics to create riffs and chord progressions, perhaps no one has been more successful than Neil Young, the prolific singer-songwriter responsible for Heart of Gold, The Needle in the Damage Done, Harvest Moon, and dozens of other folk rock classics. Okay, so let's start off with a very common chord, a G. G major. Uh, many people like to finger this chord with their first finger on the fifth string, middle finger on the sixth string, and third finger on the first string. But if you're Neil Young, you'll probably fret it differently. You'll use your middle finger on the fifth string, your ring finger on the sixth string, and your pinky on the first string. And here's example 1A, and here's example 1B. That's just changing the fingering of your chord. And a good reason to do that is exemplified by the song Through My Sails. Let me play the chord progression for you and show you exactly what Young is doing to get some interesting chord voicings from that G as well as some other chords. One, two, three, four. So, back to our G chord. Actually, he's not even really using the fifth string. He'll just use like the, uh, the ring finger to block off the fifth string. And that's your G. But then he'll play this G sus4 chord by putting the first finger on the second string. And then we get a G add 9 chord by moving the, the first finger to the third string. So right there, you've got three different variations on a G chord. He then goes to an E minor chord, but he actually plays uh, this embellishment here by putting a C note in here. And then pulling that off, actually pulling it off but taking the finger away, and it goes to an E minor. And then he plays the C major G, and it's important to use the uh, middle ring and pinky. That in itself is a very colorful sound, but then he'll add the first finger to the second string for uh, first fret. And then we'll play a D5 chord. Actually, we're blocking off the first string, so we don't play the first string. I'm just letting uh, my middle finger touch that string so that it doesn't sound. And my third finger will come in to play the fourth string at the fourth fret comes off, and then the third finger moves to the third string, gets a D6, and back to your D5. Okay, let's move to example 2A. And uh, this is an idea based on the song Revolution Blues. Um, he's going to use some variations on A minor. If you know your first position A minor chord, just first finger on the second string, middle finger on the fourth, ring finger on the third. And then it's going to be a sus4, A sus4 chord. So what I do is just put the pinky down. And that supplants that finger. So we'll be taking that off, and then I'll take these other fingers off. So here's the rhythm. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's a really interesting idea. We can use that with different chords. Let's say we take a C chord. This is example 2B. And then we add the pinky to get C add 9. And we'll go back and forth with that same kind of rhythm that we played for example 2A. Example 2C, same thing. We're going to use a series of D chords. We have D, and then we add the pinky. We have a D sus4. Remove that, regular D. And then we're going to remove the first finger, and we have a D at 4, and back to D. So with that same rhythm, 1, 2, 3, 4... Finally, in 2D, we're going to start off with this D7 uh, sus4. If you think of a D7, it looks like that. Then you push the pinky up to the uh, first string third fret, and you get D7 sus4. We'll then go to a D minor 7, barring two strings and playing the uh, third string at the second fret. Remove that second finger and we get a D minor 11 back to D minor D minor 11 so here's example 2D one two three four So in example three, uh, this is a chord progression modeled on the song Motion Pictures for Carrie. I've actually tuned my guitar down a whole step from, uh, well, standard tuning. It's still standard tuning, but down. This is D, G, C, F, A, D. So um, the song is going to be using a series of D chords in the beginning, but they'll actually sound as a C chord. So let me play example three. One, two. So we had a D chord, and then what I did is played a D major 7, which is simply barring three strings. We move from our standard D to a bar. Now you'll notice the melody is descending down, so you would expect the next chord to be, to be this D7. And it is, but uh, Young uses a little, little hammer on in this to get a nice little D11 to D7 chord voicing. Okay. Uh, we then go to a G chord, uh, regular standard G chord, however you want to uh, finger it. Then E, E to E7, and I think uh, it, just looking at this right now, I'm thinking, you know, this is part of the, the the critical thing, important thing about this lesson is removing fingers, adding fingers, gives us different chords. You've probably done at some point in your guitar playing career, played an E and then played an E7. And it's just the idea that you can add fingers and subtract fingers and get these different chord voicings. So keep that in mind for your own compositions. Another useful technique besides adding fingers and subtracting fingers is to take a chord shape uh, and move it up and down the neck to create other chord voices. Uh, I've now shifted my tuning to double drop D tuning, sometimes called D modal tuning. And essentially, if you are in standard tuning, you keep everything the same except for the sixth string and the first string, which you tune down to D. Okay. Um, the next example, example 4A, is based on the song Oh, the Laughing Lady. And basically, we're just going to start off with this D5 chord, and we're going to strum through all the strings. Just kind of big 
unique sound to it. I lift off the first finger to create a D sus4, come back to D5. And that's similar to what Young would play in the intro of Old Laughing Lady. In example 4B, uh, this is an, another part of Old Laughing Lady. That's something he would play in the verses. He would go like this. One, two, three, four. see I'm just using the same chord shape to what I used for the D5. I move it up two frets to the fourth and fifth fret. It becomes D6-9. Move it up two more frets. It becomes D major 7. And then I move back down to D6-9. You repeat. And on the second pass we come all the way up to the seventh fret end up with a D sus4. Okay, in example 4C, I've taken the same tuning, the D modal tuning, but I brought it down another whole step. Uh, this is like the uh, song Don't Let It Bring You Down. Uh, and you'll notice just by bringing that tuning down a whole step, I have this another layer of just really syrupy, gooey that sounding chord. So let me play example 4C based on Don't Let It Bring You Down. One, two, three, four. start off again with this D5 chord and then we're going to move that shape up to the 5th and 6th fret and then to the 7th and 8th fret D sus4 this back here was a D minor 7 D sus4 and then we have a B flat chord here we we'll keep that first string open and then an A minor Okay, uh, this is example five. I am still, I'm in the drop D tuning, but tuned down a whole step. So uh, the low string is C, the fifth string is G, fourth is C, third string is F, second string is A, and first string is D. Uh, this example is based on the song Pardon My Heart, and it's a finger picker. And as Adam describes it, it has more of a claw hammer kind of feel to it, if you're familiar with claw hammer style playing. I'm not really a claw hammer guy, but I will do my best to, to do a pseudo claw hammer in this. So this is example uh, five. Two, three, four. Starting off with a D chord, and Adam points out that you know getting those hammer-ons right is is important to the timing of this. So they have to be a pretty pretty pronounced hammer-on. Sorry, let me do that second part. We're going from a C add nine, so a G slash B. This slide back to D and G 
slash B. Okay, for example six and seven, we're going to be back in standard tuning. And after all those low tunings, you might sound hear that uh, standard tuning sounds pretty fresh to your ears. It does to mine for sure. Um, example six is based on the song Look Out for My Love. And uh, let me play it for you and explain what's going on. One, two, three, four. playing an E chord. He actually doesn't play the third string, so we get the major third out of the equation. But then you get that little ninth in there. And then we play a D. Um, nothing, nothing to say about the D here. And we go to the A. Sus4, I just fly my pinky over, and a G. Bring the pinky in, the, bring in that D note on the, on the second string. Finally, in example seven, this is based on the song Heart of Gold. And um, let me play that one for you. One, two, three, four. Starting off with an E minor seven here, and we let the you start off with just hitting that bass note. Let that bass note ring, and then that strumming underneath sounds really nice. Uh, the D back to E minor, and then we play this little line with a hammer on, which is just based on the E minor pentatonic scale. Back to our E minor seven. Second time you bring in a D sus tube just by lifting off the ring finger. Another nice little open sound. Back to E minor. And there you have it. So um, that's our lesson on Neil Young. Um, as you can see, a lot of this stuff was in different tunings, using different sounds and open strings. Uh, but experiment around with the chord shapes you already know. I think that's kind of the crux of, uh, of this lesson is if you know a D, why not take a finger off, put a finger on, or just to work with the, the shape a little bit. You know, for your own composition, you might find that really interesting and steers your compositions in a really cool direction. Thanks a lot.